Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Grandia Parallel Trippers. Once you have every single other character, now you can actually start getting the final two characters, which we're going to be working on today, getting Mullen and Lean. So first of all, go to the ancient city and talk to this guy who says that Mullen went to the tree sea. And apparently he's looking for Fina for some reason, so let's get on out here and uh, head on over there. See if we can't find the guy. I always liked Mullen in the original Grandia. Yeah, those three girls, they were kind of bitches, but Mullen, I don't know, he wasn't so bad. Really, he's in Ghostland now? Please don't tell me that we're going to have to go to every single land to find this guy. Ugh. Really? Seriously? He left here too? Where did he go? Seriously? Oh, Vlog Volcano. Okay. At least there's no world map to traverse. You can just kind of go there. That's kind of nice. Now isn't the aerial archipelago? Uh. Okay. It's also kind of nice that they really don't make you go, like, too far into these areas to find Mullen. It's just kind of, like, right by the entrance. So it's not too bad to find him. You know, as long as you know where to go and who to talk to to trigger the next event. Yeah, where's Lean? If you forgot, Fina and Lean are twin sisters. Oh no, she was kidnapped by monsters! Why didn't you protect her? If she was kidnapped back in the world's end, the hell are you doing here? Oh, what'd they drop? A golden shell. Hmm. Okay. Hey, more party members with Mullen joining our team. And Mullen, pretty damn good, I've got to say. Let's go ahead and uh, check him out. Uh, let's see, Mullen, where are you? Oh, wait, there you are. Let me go back. Okay, so he has tons of HP, AP, his attack stats, and pretty much all of his stats are pretty standard on the high side. His magical stats are insane, and he has only access to daggers and swords and nothing else, but hey, those stats, really, really nice. He's a great attacker. So let's look at my current attacker, Justin. Okay, yeah, he is a Berserk Ring on, so he has extras right now in his attack and defense, but without that, um, his stats would be pretty much on par with Mullen's. But look at his swords. Like, come on, and his magic stats. Like, it's really crappy. So here's what I'm gonna do. Justin's out. Mullen's in. I'm going to uh, take off all of Justin's accessories and cards and uh, put them onto Mullen and then show you my setup. Okay, I got that taken care of. So here is my new Mullen with his accessories. Gave him the Berserk Ring and the Talisman that Justin previously had and his action cards. Um, I changed a little tiny thing around here, mostly because Mullen can't have all of the weapons like Justin can. So, Expect and Cancel Sword are the only weapons that he has available. So I gave him kind of some support spells as well with Mao and Runner All, in addition to the All Healer Plus and Resurrect that everybody else has. So, because David can use all weapons, I gave him the Soul Buster. A lot of bosses actually are weak, or are spirit types, so they're weak to the Soul Buster, so I do want that on him. Um, I also platinum all of my cards and gave him the Death Loss card which will deal defense, you know, defense down on, um, on one enemy. So yeah, I just feel like I just wanted to make sure that all of that was done. Took about 15 minutes or so to get all that stuff done. So now let's go find Lean, who's been kidnapped, apparently, in the World Edge, because Mullen couldn't protect her or something. Anyway, getting to Lean, rather obnoxious, mostly because of this stupid sled ride that we have to do. We've done this once, now we gotta do it again, but this time we're under kind of a time limit, actually, so hopefully, yeah, I get this done on time. We shall see. Uh, don't hit anything. Yeah, you wanna go over to this right goal. Um, if you don't hit it in time, then you're kinda screwed. But I made it in time, perfect. And if I can do it, you guys can do it, don't worry. There's plenty of nice stuff in here to have tons of treasure, 
nothing all that great, but eh, it's here. Might as well go ahead and use this so that we have uh, the warp point activated. That shield veil increases your defense and magic defense by 20 points each, so that's pretty nice. Oh, and all the monsters in here, every single one of them can get one-shotted by Fina's Burn Flare, so I really feel no need to show any of them because of that. And what do we have here? Uh, yeah, like, there's a lot of treasure. Is the treasure any good? Not really, but it's here, I guess. Whee! Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of that going on here. And what do we have? Eh, not bad. I don't think that I've really bought anything this entire game. I've bought nothing from Guido or Gina's shop. And I've bought a couple cards here and there, that's it. And these enemies, they're the same ones that we saw back when we first came here. It's not like they're upgraded in any way, shape, or form, so you're really not missing out on anything. Look at Holy Crown, that's a new accessory. That increases your magical defense and your AP both by 50. Do I think it's worth equipping? No, not so much. Oh god, this. Okay, so basically what we have here is a whole bunch of ropes to go down. I'm only going to go down the various ropes that actually lead to some sort of treasure. So we're going to be dealing with this a lot. Yeah, and then warping back to that point. Every single rope is going to have a warp point that will lead you back to that particular point. Oh, lots of stuff going on here. Oh, got a tusk part. Hmm. That'll come in handy soon enough. And that's the game's way of saying, hey, you better be exploring all of these pits. Because if you don't, we're not going to let you actually move on. So let's see, now the next rope that I want to do is this one. Yeah, it kind of lands you on top of that point there, so you don't really see it all that well. Get an Ashura Charm. Um, that makes you resist all weapon damage by 40%, so that could be kind of nice, but we have other things that let, you re that let you resist all damage by 40%, not just weapon damage. So again, not too much of a fan. So we got a Tusk part and now a Beak part. That's the, the only other part that we need to uh, have. The only rope that you need to go down here is this one. In order to grab... Oh, a human proof. That could be useful if you're having trouble with these bosses, but I'm not. And then down here we have a lot of ropes, but only this one is useful. None of the other things will lead to anything useful whatsoever. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's missing something. Yeah, why not? Oh, well, that's cute. It actually changed the statue! Who knew? So we have a penguin, that makes sense for this polar area, but what is this supposed to be? Like a rat or something? Is it supposed to be like a bear? Because it does not look like a bear at all. I went ahead and took the liberty of killing both monsters there. Why not? Oh, more fruits and stuff like that. I need, again, I need to use all these stupid fruits. I promise I will use the fruits off screen. That Devil Buster, pretty nice. Deals extra damage to demon type monsters. And the Emperor's Helmet that we just got right there increases your AP, magic defense, and magic attack power by 50 points. However, it's cursed. So that's everything that we can do in that kind of pitfall area. Let's go ahead and grab all this junk. Eh, standard stuff. Okay. Remember that gold shell that Mullen gave us? Yeah. Now is the time to use it. Oh, there you go. I wonder if you could come here without Mullen. I guess so, because that shell would block your way. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. Whee! And it keeps on going. Hmm. Let's see if we can't move it again. Yeah, kind of a bastard move on the game part right there. And then we have a little puzzle here, and what you want to do is start at the top and kind of work your way down to the bottom, just like so. And then let's see if we can't do that again in order to um, remove these little switches there. Yeah, so basically go all the way down and then hit the first four of them again in order, and 
you will open up this passageway. And then over here, you just kind of have to play with it, finagle it around. Um, let's see, so you're gonna hit all of them. Let's hit them again. Okay, perfect. So I hit all, f all five of them, and then I hit the top one again, and then that opened up the pathway there. So yeah, once you do that, it's going to stay changed for you. So we can go over here, and this better be a really great accessory for all of that work. Oh, a talisman. Great. I would be excited if I didn't already have three of them. The hell am I gonna do with a fourth talisman? Completely useless. And here we have another puzzle to deal with. Let's see. I do want to go ahead and activate this warp point right here. Um, if you take this rope, that'll just bring you back down to the very beginning of this area, so don't do it! So what you want to do uh, first is hit these switches. Just go ahead and hit that entire row right there. And that's going to activate or lower those little barriers there so we can grab a little speed fruit. Not half bad. And then what I want to do is hit, um, let's see which ones, these three, two, three, there we go, this, these three in the corner there, um, and that will open up this one. I'm going to chain boom. I want to say that that's an explosion type element, I'm pretty sure. Next, hit this one, this one, and this one, and that will open up the final passageway through here. Yikes, get away from me! Oh, hey, it's lean! Are you all right? A frog captured you? I thought you were supposed to be incredibly powerful, Lean. You've got to be kidding me. The all-powerful Lean, who uses Icarian magic, has been kidnapped by a frog. Yeah. And a frog that you can one-shot with Burn Flame on level one. I mean, come on. Oh, seriously? You didn't all die? I'm shocked, game. I actually really am. In my first test run, they all died. Who knew? Oh, well. A random shot will take up the rest of them. But yeah, Lean, you're kind of pathetic that you couldn't handle that on your own. Gotta say. Uh-oh, there's more. Yikes. And who are you? Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of this. Uh-oh. Whoa! For boss time! Against some random guy. And we're gonna be using Time Gate as usual. Just put it on the first one so that we can um, freeze his little hands there so they don't bother me. I hate... Oh, it's the Magical Emperor. I hate how these bosses have extra hands, but man! Um... Using Time Gate makes my life so much easier. Okay, so first things first, we're going to use a sniper shot on him, and we're going to put him on the, uh, let's see, we'll put him here, just so um, we can steal his accessory, Just and that will deal some, you know, stat downs by stealing his accessory there. But hey, and we got Ghost Proof. Nice! And you, um, you're actually doing something, and I don't want him to do anything, so let's see about canceling his action. Please? Hey, awesome! Got cancelled, and did you see that damage that Mullen dealt? It's really nice having somebody really high up there on swords. Okay, next thing on my list of things to do, let's get a defense down on him, and we'll power that up quite a bit as well, so that, um, you know, my stuff can be very effective against him. And speaking of powering things up, let's use a world end as well, and we can put him next to David in order to try to activate some combos here. Um, next thing I want to do, uh, we'll use a cancel sword, why not? And I'll stick you in the back right here, in the back of this combo, because something tells me by the time that, that cancel sword hits, the Magical Emperor will actually have an action, like Meteor Strike there. Yeah, but thankfully, my cancel sword is going to go before him, so hopefully it cancels his action. Not half bad. Let's see how much more damage this Cancel Sword does now that I lowered his defense by 42 frickin' points. Whoa! Look at that damage! That's insane! Um, it didn't cancel his action though. Oh, that sucks. Let's 
Let's try a Soul Buster, since he is a Spirit-type monster. Might as well. You know what? I'm just gonna put him on four. Um, since he does have not all that much HP left, I would imagine that that Soul Buster might just kill him by hitting his weakness as well. I'm good. I'm not too concerned about that damage right there. Whoa! Oh, man, this is so good. Probably has, like, no HP. Like, yeah, 76 HP. Let's put him on number two and just kill this guy. Pretty simple. Pretty easy. Hey, awesome. I get the bang card. Oh, wow, look! The person that I've been using all game long! All game long! Only level 7 on his bows. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. And then the person who just kind of fell into my lap, level 45 on his swords? Yeah, there's something wrong there. You're reviving? What do you mean you're reviving? Hmm. Oh, yeah, probably not. Okay. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. And with that, Lean joins the party. Let's check her out. Let's go into our party setup here. And uh, let's see, we'll just view some stats. So we have two Icarian casters here. Fina with a level 22 in her Icarian magic, and then 11 and 20 in the other things. Um, 20 in whips, that's it. And let's look at her sister now, who just fell into her lap, and uh, see how well she's doing on her stats. Oh, and look at that base AP. 200? Come on. Yeah. Level 45 Akirian Magic, and 45 in everything else, and 25 in Swords and Knives. So yeah, I'm gonna be using Lean. Also, look at that magical attack stat. That thing is insane. So I'm basically going to transfer wholesale everything that Fina has and give it to Lean and uh, throw her inside the party, including accessories. And then next time on Let's Play Grandia Parallel Trippers, we're gonna be start going after all those crystals. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.